Hello everyone, welcome to Chasing a Murder. Hope everyone is doing great. We're going to go ahead and jump into this because I've been crazy busy lately. Um, you know, we have that Chad Daybell case coming up. The doomsday serial killer. The lover of the doomsday mother, Lori Vallow. In my personal opinion, one of the few but worse serial killer couples to date. They use a false narrative attached to their religion to murder, maim, and destroy people, and even in their own families. His name is Chad Daybell. Her name is Lori Vallow. They are accused of killing 7-year-old J.J. Vallow, 16-year-old at the time, Tylee Ryan, which were Lori's own children. His wife, Tammy Daybell, as well. As for Lori, there are several other deaths under her Mormon garments. Her husband, Charles Vallow, and her attempted murder of her nephew-in-law, Brandon Boudreaux. If you're not familiar with the story, well, you can go over my very long series, Life Beyond the Grave, and get to know just how crazy this group of people are. So Chad Daybell's court date is coming up. His trial, it'll be April 1st of 2024. Unlike Lori, is still facing the death penalty if the jury finds that he deserves it. Lori Vallow was also facing the death penalty, but she managed to get off thanks to her prosecutors and the mistakes that they made. Lori Vallow Daybell has been trialed for three of the five people she is accused of killing or attempting to kill. She is serving life for those killings, and those killings are, again, her two children and the wife of her lover and new husband, Chad Daybell. So starting in April, it will be Chad Daybell's turn to face his malice accusations of murder, theft, and conspiracy to kill. Many people are wondering how will um, Chad Daybell's defense handle this. We know that John Pryor is his attorney. And now that Lori's already gotten her trial over with, this leaves uh, several options for Chad Daybell. He could either point the finger at his wife, Lori Vallow. They can make a plea deal. You know, it's been four, four years since Chad was arrested. After police investigators find those two children buried on his own property. And if he hasn't come to his senses by now and accepted that he was part of this evil escapade and uh, show any type of remorse or regret, he really probably isn't going to ever most people fall in this case four years later are waiting to see if Chad Daybell will wake up and have any type of remorse for what he did, but that doesn't seem to be the case. He has no emotion. The only emotion that these two have occasionally is they smile. At least lately, Lori's been quite confident, seems to come back. Um, to her usual self, being smirky, laughing, just thinking she's, you know, the crap. We see no signs that Chad cares about these children's lives or his wife, for that matter. And do you guys remember when the Lori was the first one to be arrested in Hawaii? Chad Daybell started showing up to court. This is actually one of the pictures of him showing up to his wife's court date and didn't seem to think that he was touchable. He didn't seem to care that the whole world was seeing through their veil that they thought they had over everyone's eyes. He, he just seems to act as if he is that untouchable guy that the prosecutors haven't a chance to bring him to face certain justice for his mal malicious ways and the grandparents of jj vallow well they're having to go through this nightmare over and over and over and they finally have been able to lay their children to rest after four years of them children being held for we don't know why in an interview with Fox News, the grandparents said the reality is there's two dead children and there's one dead mother. I still ask myself constantly why this happened. 
that's uh, Larry Woodcock sharing that. And like the rest of us, he's waiting to see, you know, what's his reaction? Does he have remorse? Is he waking up? Is he seeing reality? According to Larry, he says, quote, I haven't seen any change in his demeanor. I think that he's pretty much a wimp of a man, end quote. While many of us are hoping that he does receive the death penalty, I mean, taking children's lives, I mean, that's just the lowest of low. The Woodcocks say, sometimes living is worse than dying. And in Chad's case, I'm not going to be the judge of that. I'll let those 12 jurors decide that fate, end quote. They finished the interview with this, quote, Mama and Papa love you. We always have, we always will. And one day I'll meet you, JJ, in heaven, because I know that's where he's at, end quote. The Woodcock said that they will be attending this trial as well. So they'll leave their Louisiana home, head to Idaho for the proceedings. Now you got to remember the Woodcocks have been through hell already. They're one of the main reasons that investigators were on this case in the first place. Too bad that they couldn't get these investigators to do something sooner than they did. I think if they had listened to the Woodcocks in the first place and took it more seriously, we could have prevented a lot of deaths, unnecessary deaths. Now, Chad Daybell, who was in Boise, Idaho, is now being moved to uh, Ada County. And uh, I guess it's Judge Boyce filed a court document Monday, March 4th, stating that Chad Daybell must be transferred to Ada County Jail from Fremont no later than March 22nd. The new mugshot coming out on Chad Daybell, well, you can see that he's looking quite disappointed. He's probably getting scared right about now. So that moment that they pushed away over and over again is now coming to its end. Reality is slapping him in the face and he has to face these consequences that he and his lover have created. So we know that hit, unlike Lori, Chad D. Bell's trial will be public. Again, it will begin on April 1st, 2024 at 9 a.m. in the morning. He's held on six charges, including three counts of murder, as well as three charges to conspiracy to commit murder and first-degree murder. Now, let's not forget about the insurance fraud, one count of grand theft. Because remember, he had just increased his wife's life insurance policy right before Tammy passed away. He was so blatant that it, he, you would think that he was really thinking he was going to get away with this. Now, we know that Chad Daybell's children, he has five now, all adults. They have stayed out of the spotlight. They have tried to stay out of the spotlight except for a few occasions. Emma's gotten a few. Uh, we'll go over that in Life Beyond the Grave. Make sure you check that out. But where are these kids? Well, they're staying behind the scenes. They don't want to talk about this case. They're keeping their mouth shut. And it seems to me that they're kind of confused on this situation. You got to remember, they were brought up in a household with Chad Daybell, the master manipulator who had instilled in their brain that he was this great prophet and that his kids had this special role to play in the future as the apocalypse approached, so they would play a special part in the new Jerusalem. That's something he's told his kids, he's told his wife, he's told other people, and he's written it in books. We believe that the reason that Judge Voice allowed this trial um, to be, uh, the allowed cameras in the courtroom is to save the children from having to come out in public and deal with the media and anything else. So we know that, you know, his kids kind of thought that he may be innocent and was framed because the way that they found the kids on their property, since he was a grave digger in his past, that this isn't the way that his father would have done things. This was a stupid way to do it. 
the fact that they weren't that shocked that that was in their yard was more concerning for me. But we really don't know how these kids feel. It must be insanely confusing considering that they thought that this man was a godly man. He represented good. And then here he is facing murder charges. Murder charges for their own mother. So drop below what you think that these kids are thinking today. How do you think they're coping? Now we're going to go more into this shortly. Today I'm going to be really busy so I'm going to have to cut this kind of short here. But we're going to talk about what we can kind of expect to see and hear as court begins and then moves deeper into where they start sharing more evidence and facts we probably haven't heard before. There most likely are going to be more texts and emails that we haven't seen yet. Um, because what we seen during Lori's trial really didn't have anything to do with Chad. I want to reach out and say thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you for your support. You guys have really made a difference. I really love you guys. I miss you guys. And I'm trying to get back here. Still dealing with the mold in the house. I'm having an adjuster come out in just a second. So I need to get off here. But please share a missing person's face today on your media. People like Jasmine Robinson, Dulce. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys soon.